on this video, we're going to be talking about Meguiar's mechanical leveler. So this is kind of the entry level into pit style levelers. Uh, this is basically the first step in, most basic unit. Um, and you know, all pit style levelers are considered an integral part of the floor. So what that means is they're actually able to support cross traffic as far as driving across and all that. They you know support everything just like the inside of the floor of the uh, facility. So. Um, on these units, the size ranges from six by six to seven by 10, depending on your application. And capacity ranges go from 25K up to 45K on the mechanical style. Um, as far as operation goes, it's simple operation. There's a chain in the back, so the dock attendant would, when a truck is backed up into, the, uh, into position, the dock attendant would pull the chain in the back, which would actually raise the leveler. And one of the significant parts about a mechanical leveler versus say a pneumatic or hydraulic is the mechanical is actually upward biased. So that means it's at rest in the fully upright position. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we go underneath and look at the structural parts of this. Uh, but once the leveler is raised, the dock attendant would then step onto the unit, lower it down, and the lip would rest in the bed of the truck. All right, for demonstration purposes, we have this leveler in the maintenance position and it's really important anytime you have the leveler up and you're working in it, demonstrating it, uh, maintaining it, whatever, you always need to have this safety prop here in place with the pin locked in and you also need to have the lip prop in place that keeps the lip from falling and just basically creates a safe environment so you don't have any accidents. Uh, so as we talk about structural design, we're going to start at the back and work our way forward talking about all the different components. To make things a little bit easier to demonstrate the rear hinge and the back portion of the leveler, we have this uh, cut out here and this is you know, considered the top part of the deck. We're going to flip this up so it's actually a little bit easier to see. So the first thing we want to mention is our rear supports. So we use C-channel uh, supports all the way across the back of the leveler and you know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the units in the industry have like three supports. Well, we actually use four and we have put the outermost two at the outer section of the leveler to prevent uh, bending or damage to the corners, you know, and that what we talked about cross traffic. Um, the next, on top of the uh, C channel, we have this angled shelf that supports down through the C channel down to the pit floor. And one of the significant things about our leveler is a full width rear hinge. So this bar right here stretches across the entire width back portion of the leveler and it's supported through compression down to the angled shelf, through the C-channel, down to the floor, which, like I said, creates strength through compression. We're not relying on sheer strength of hinge pins, but we're supporting all the weight, all the way down to the floor. And the two highest impact points of a leveler are the rear and front hinge, which is why we put a lot of focus on those two points. And we uh, actually, that's part of the reason why, or part of what contributes to 20% more steel in all of our units versus the competition. Due to our unique design of our rear hinge, we are able to offer a lifetime warranty on that complete rear unit. And we are the only uh, company in the industry that's able to offer that. So moving up from the back, all of our deck support is C-channel. And the significant part about that is a lot of other designs you'll see will have like a JB. Um, and you know, the actual contact to the deck is about the size of your finger. Well, we have on our C-channel, you have two inches of actual deck support per beam. And that also offers the ability to weld on both sides where we have two welds in a comparison to one. So it makes it a lot stronger, holds everything together, together better, and like I said, creates more deck support. Uh, moving up from the C-channel, we have our front header. This is a half inch thick, seven inch tall, continuous header. So a lot of other designs you'll see will have actual brakes and they won't have you know, the full width across the front. Um, that ties into our tow guards on either side which creates for a four-sided box construction. So that is very significant because it ties the whole unit together. It creates a strong base for the platform and makes the strongest leveler possible. And that's the strongest design that we could actually make. Moving from there, we have our uh, front hinge, which is a continuous uh, hinge all the way across, mounted with piano-style hinge tubes that are mounted alternatingly from the front header to the lip. And that brings us to our lip. So all the units come standard with a 16-inch lip, uh, upgradable to 18 or 20. Um, and one thing we want to mention about this lip is it extends at the top of the cycle, which causes it to be fully yieldable. So it, while it's, the leveler is raising, it's not going to cause any damage to any freight or to the unit itself as it raises and is, comes on the top of the point of the cycle. Now we're going to move into talking about the activation system, which is going to start with those springs back there. So earlier I talked about how this unit is upward biased. So when this unit is in the raised position, 
the springs in the back are actually at rest. And so when you walk the unit down, that actually compresses those springs and it's holding down by the hole down here. So um, one of the significance about our spring activation is we actually have four springs back there. A lot of the other units in the industry have two or three. Um, it makes for a lot more adjustability and be able to uh, make this thing as, to operate as easily as possible. Um, it actually has one adjustment point here, which makes it a lot easier. Um, and then as the dock attendant walks this unit down, it utilizes this roller and cam system that makes for an easier, more level walk down. And then here we have the hold down, which I was talking about earlier. So our hold down actually has 11 teeth, which creates a stronger hold on the unit as it's you know, holding on those springs. And the industry standard on a lot of the other units is about like nine, five to nine teeth. So we have a lot more on ours, uh, which makes for a stronger hold down. Lastly here, we have our safety lights, and these are required by OSHA. In the event of an early departure, if the unit was to fall, these safety lights will actually stop the leveler from falling to an unsafe angle and uh, prevent uh, injury to a dock attendant or damage to any type of equipment. So uh, for, any, for any more information or a quote, feel free to contact McGuire or your local representative or visit wbmcguire.com.